African Jews today, especially the Hasidim and all of that, uh -huh. Hasidim means pious, means pious ones. And the, and the Hasidim come out of a group of, of, of uh, Kabbalists and Talmudian Torah type Jews who are actually, actually worshiping Heru. They actually worship Heru. They don't even really worship um, Yahweh and the way that they talk about. That's the difference between them and the Jews over in Israel. The Jews in Israel don't like the ones over here in America. Because the Jews in Israel worship Yahweh. And all you got to do is get brother, one of Brother Rashid's tapes to find out who Yahweh is. But he's basically an egregorial spirit from the time of creation that's just here to just destroy the body. And get blood sacrifice. Whereas these ones, the, the Jews that you be seeing with the side locks, that's, that's, that's basically them trying to be this. When you see them in all black, and you see them walking around the hood, and you see them doing their little rituals, bobbing their head back and forth, the same way you see Muslims in front of the Kaaba stone doing this. They sometimes they wear little black black boxes on their heads, like the black box you get in the airplane when the airplane crash. That's symbolic of the Kaaba stone, and the Kaaba stone symbolic of the black woman. So again, they worship in that. But when you see them with the side lock like that, right. what it is you see them are doing, whenever you see in Kemet, when you see images of the young princes, you see some of the princes with side locks in the side of their hair because they worship in Heru. When you look at the term Israel, Israel breaks down to Isis, Ra, and El. That's uh -huh. Isis, Ra, and Elohim, which is um, Osiris, which is the black man. So again, when they had to set up, when they set up Israel, they were setting it up based on the so-called Zionist perspective. But the original Zionist was, the, was us. We was the ones. We was the ones doing all of this. We was the ones creating situations in which these people had to had to find a way to exist and find a way and a, and a place to be. Yeah, you can come up now. Yeah, two more minutes. Um, a place for them to exist at. Because in the end, these people don't have no... These people don't have history the way that we have it. Because there was a time in history where they did not occupy what it is we call history. That's not, again me trying to cut people out of the human family that's me being real the same way they talk about how nobody existed when the dinosaurs existed come on man come on man all you got to do is watch the flintstones and see and see fred was existing at the same time and they domesticating these animals who who taught them how to do all of that that's us that's us it's always us and the problem is the more we do us the more they can't do them the more we focus on what we have to do the more we don't pay attention to them. And if we stop paying attention to them, they will cease to exist. And the thing is, we as people think that that's a joke. It is not a joke. We allow them to exist here by giving them mental energy. One of the illest, I would, any viewer that's watching this, whether it be now, 150 years from now, 2,000 years from now, if there's people that are occupying white supremacist mind state in your time that you live in, or ignore them and see what happens. Because once you ignore them, you take the mental energy, the lifeline, away from them. Once the lifeline is gone, then that means that they're, they cease to exist. Whether or not they're physically in front of you is immaterial. Because I can be, I could be next, I could be around pigs and all that with bullet belts and all this shit on. They're not bothering me because they don't exist to me. Because I don't give them any energy. You delete them from your reality. From my reality. And, and when I do see them, if, if I am thinking about them, I always think about them in a subservient position because that's what they're here to do. These, these people, I got a tape, we got a tape that we just um, finished called Black Nazis, man. And it's all about this type of thing. And it's all about black people feeding this society to white supremacy. It's not about hating black people. It never was about that. All of, the, all of those images of slavery, and again, I'm not saying that a lot of that didn't happen. I'm saying that the way that it is presented to you is presented to you in a, in a sleight of hand way and it's not accurate. You cannot create a ship for slavery because you cannot enslave a ship. Therefore, a slave ship cannot exist in a traditional sense because you cannot build a ship for slavery. Because if they were going to do that, they'd have put bathrooms or something in them. Because you cannot take millions of people son million imagine if they went and took if you took five million people i've had scholars astronomical numbers a hundred million people 
Imagine if you took 100 million black people from Brooklyn right now. There would be no black people in Brooklyn right now if you no. did that. So that but means that if you... Check this out, though. They didn't care about toilet bowls and nothing like that because they defecated on themselves. Yeah, but that means that they... You they you lost half themselves. You lost half your cargo, though. Remember, right. you trying to and sell that's slaves. How they got all of disease and stuff like that as well. Right, right, but 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 listen, but also listen to what you're saying. If they defecated, urinated, and vomited on themselves, by the time you got the slaves back to America, yeah. if you had a whole boat, let's say you had, let's say you have 400 slaves on the ship, right? Mm -hmm. And it take three months for you to get from point A to point B to Jamestown, Virginia, right? No bathroom, no this, no that. That means that by the time you got to Jamestown, Virginia, you only probably had at least one, two slaves left. Because remember, these people are not, these people are vomiting, shitting on themselves, defecating on themselves. There was this that that true, but a lot of it is definitely... What I'm saying is that most of those PO, most of those Africans that you see on that thing were actually POWs from wars in Africa that were basically brought over here to be redistributed into the American culture and were hoodwinked by the Caucasoids that we used as, as money managers to go over there and get them. And once they brought them over here, they miseducated them, kept them away from us because we wasn't dealing with them because they was prisoners of the war that we was fighting globally. So we didn't really know. And again, the white man is our slave. So he ain't gonna revolt against me. So the next thing I know, I go from Africa to America by way of a pen because at the time that we're talking about anything west of Mali was Africa. So that means if I took you from Virginia, right? <laughs> if I took you from Maine to Virginia, I'm still in Africa. I'm still taking you to a part of Africa. It's just that on the map, it's different. That's why when they got the chance to become map writers and all this shit, they f turned the map upside down. They started naming places that didn't exist. They started mapping trade routes from maps that were older than they even existed. And then what they then did was spun a story through iconography, through images and pictures, and then killed off the generation that remembered what really happened and then brought in a whole nother generation of POWs and told them, you're not POWs, you're slaves. You're a Negro, you're this, you're that. And then kept them isolated from everybody else. The slave comes from the word Slovak. Yes, so if slave come from Slovak, how could, I'm not Slovenian, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? None of us are, you know what I'm saying? But Negro slavery, right, came into existence based on what they call chattel slavery. But the first chattel slaves was Caucasians. Yeah, let's let's end it now because I'm getting hyped. <laughs> let's say peace to the house of consciousness. Thank peace. you. Thank my wife, Selena Cordova L. Thank you. Thank the God. Thank the ancestors. Till again, peace. Hey, and, and things that really are irrelevant now. Like the black nationalism yeah. is, is yeah. a fucking mind control. Uh, too. Uh, like the brother yeah, saying, yeah, we at a stage now. Where yeah, everything, black everything black that these people are doing, they are doing in a preordained fashion. So what we have to really realize is that, like today, you had a bunch of boule, stupid ass masons walking around here with their ritual, oh, they came cable with toe, yeah, with their cable toe ritual, dressed like women. And what they're not realizing is the fact that they had to come to the Apollo ritualistically. What they're doing is they're going to Heru because mm -hmm. Apollo means Heru which is the god of the sun, which is the original man, which is the original woman, you know what I'm saying, coming together to form Heru, which is the sun, the true Christ, coming through. But these niggas is just like women running through with cables around their neck, thinking that they're going to be initiated into some new order, when all these niggas, these Mason niggas and all these niggas been flashing hand signs and shit for over 300 years, and we ain't no further than where we've been. So what we got to realize is that all of the negative paradigms of the old centuries are done. We got to get past all of this bullshit. We got to get past this black white shit. We got to get past everything that's going to keep us on a on a on a mundane level that is going to constrict our evolution as the forerunners as the archetype of humanity.